Okay, so hopefully everyone can see and hear me. Please yell out if there's any issues. But at that, well, let's get started. Um, and I'm sure a few more um, a few more people will join in shortly. So hello everyone, um, and welcome to the third of the ECMOS New Zealand talks for this year. Um, we here um, at ECMOS New Zealand would like to extend an especially warm welcome to all those joining us, um, but also to our wonderful panel of speakers here. So that includes Professor Richard Mackay, Dr. Steve Brown, Peter Phillips and Michelle Bashter, all of whom, of course, um, are very well known to ECOMOS circles through their many years of involvement with local, regional and international cultural heritage discourse and practice. So we're very lucky to have them here with us today. By way of a short intro, I'm Stacey Vallis and I'm um, an elected board member of the International Council for Monuments and Sites, or ECOMOS, as many will know it, and I will help moderate our session now. So for those who might perhaps be new um, to um, the International Council for Monuments and Sites, or perhaps interested in learning more, ECOMOS is an, um, an international non-governmental organization of professionals and practitioners who are devoted to the safeguarding of places of cultural heritage value. So founded in 1965 and based in Paris, France, we currently have around 10,500 members in over 107 countries, as well as close to 30 international scientific chapters. So at that, bearing in mind that this is um, very much a, a lunchtime seminar, we will head straight into our program as we're keen to allow plenty of time for questions um, with our speakers at the end. So to offer a short background, many of us here will be aware and very much looking forward to this chance to learn more about the exciting ICMAS International General Assembly and Scientific um, uh, Symposium that will be taking place in, in Sydney, Australia between the 31st of August and the 9th of September this year. So during our session now, uh, as mentioned, we are very fortunate to be joined by members of the Australian GA 2023 team, each of whom will take um, a few short moments to share some overviews of um, a very jam-packed program that we have in place. Then we look forward to um, a fairly open Q&A segment during the second half where our audience members here with us can feel free to raise questions or simply to share what aspects of the GA you're most looking forward to. So just a few housekeeping points for um, all those on Zoom, please do ensure that your microphone is muted if you're not speaking. And if you have a question, please feel free to post in the chat. So at that, we are very excited to welcome our speakers and look forward to a great discussion. So over to Richard and your team. So I'll stop sharing my slides and um, please feel free to share yours, Richard. Thank you. Stacey, thank you. And uh, I shall share my screen. Um, oh, my screen, is, if you've stopped sharing, my screen has just um, changed the view. So I'll try again. Um, the host has disabled participant oh, screen dear. sharing. So whoever is hosting needs to allow me to share, please. Um, while that's happening, I'll just say um, welcome and good morning to everybody. I am speaking to you from Sydney, Australia, I'm from Camaragal country, and I pay my respects to elders uh, past and present, and I extend those respects to the traditional owners of all the lands on which uh, GA 2023 activities will be taking place and to any Indigenous participants who are in attendance today. Now I am able to share my screen and I'm hoping that you are all now um, seeing the slideshow. You should have my beginning slide um, on screen. Can I just check that that is, uh, thank you for nodding. Um, uh, and I now also just need to, so look, Stacey has given a very good introduction to Icomos. Um, uh, my standard introduction is to point out that Icomos isn't a Greek island. It's the International Council on Monuments and Sites. Um, I'm not going to, repeat what uh, Stacey has said, except to add that um, ICOMOS has an important um, global role amongst its general membership and 
uh, ad advisory and policy roles of uh, as an official advisory body to the World Heritage Committee, uh, through which it um, evaluates World Heritage nominations and advises on the state of conservation of properties inscribed on the World Heritage List. But more generally, it guides and advises on conservation practice. And an important part of that is the bringing together of the global ICOMOS membership um, every three years through a Triennial General Assembly. Uh, with the exception of the event held in 2020, um, that has always been in person. And uh, 2023 will be the 21st Triennial General Assembly of the global ICOMOS um, community. Now, this will be the first um, ICOMOS General Assembly which has been held in Asia or the Pacific. And let me say, I'll come to this again at the end, if you're from New Zealand, um, you will never have a more accessible ICOMOS General Assembly. Um, it's only possible because we have enormous support from our governments, the national government, our state government, and the city of, of Sydney. And we are endeavouring, notwithstanding that it's an in-person event, um, to make it carbon neutral and to support that and particularly relevant um, for our friends across the Tasman. If you go to our website, you'll find there are special Qantas flight deals, um, which include a capacity where if you pay a carbon offset, Qantas will match it and help with our carbon neutrality journey. ICOMOS GA 2023 includes um, a series of components. Um, there are a range of ICOMOS business meetings um, and they are of committees, of the board, of the entire membership, um, passing resolutions and dealing with doctrinal matters. Uh, there is also a five-day scientific symposium. It's spread across five days and Steve Brown will talk more about that. Uh, in the preceding weekend, there is a youth forum for, for emerging professionals from all around the world and Michelle will speak a little about that. Um, there is a heritage exposition, a public um, exposition open to delegates and the wider community. There are um, multiple side events. There are more than 40 side events that um, delegates can participate, uh, including um, uh, visits to amazing sites uh, in Sydney. And there are a range of pre and post tours because we recognise that our international visitors, uh, for them, this may be their lifetime trip to Australia. So I'll say a little bit more about them shortly. So I'm gonna cover things that aren't covered by the other panel members. Um, and one of those is the Heritage Exposition. It will be held at Darling Harbour um, on the shores of Sydney Harbour across five days. It will include a Heritage Trades Fair over three days at which traditional trades are showcased. Um, there are some ex exposition booths still available, although we're nearly full. And then in addition to that, um, the, the global ICOMOS um, structure also includes a series of expert scientific uh, committees uh, on all manner of subjects from polar heritage to wood conservation to conservation philosophy or vernacular architecture, um, you name it, if it's part of the cultural heritage field, ICOMOS has an international scientific committee. They will all be meeting. Some of them will hold seminars, colloquia or workshops. Some of them will just have their annual meeting. Uh, two of them, the International Scientific Committee on the Heritage of Water and the International Scientific Committee on um, uh, Aerospace, or uh, yes, I think it's called Aerospace, um, they, will be, they will both be meeting for the first time. Uh, and all of those committees will participate in the exhibition and will have a poster. And on the evening of the 5th of September, there is a networking event where they will each have a little booth and it will be possible to connect with them, to, to look at joining them if that's the expertise you have or to um, learning from them if they can assist uh, you in any way. I mentioned the, the side events. There is a, there is a really extensive um, concurrent social side event and public program. Uh, one of the highlights of the event will be an opening ceremony, including a short opera performance at the Sydney Opera House. We'll be taking over our Art Deco amusement park on the shore of the harbour for a party one night. Um, the um, two World Heritage um, properties that are in Sydney, Hyde Park Barracks and the Opera House, will both have special inspections um, and behind the scene tours for uh, ICOMOS delegates. 
There will be a public lecture hosted by the City of Sydney, the Committee for Sydney and the National Trust at Sydney's Town Hall, uh, a climate change and Pacific seminar, which again may be highly relevant to some of our New Zealand colleagues um, hosted by the Australian Museum. The Lord Mayor is hosting a reception for the Icomos Royalty, uh, and then there will be a, ga a gala dinner. But in addition to that, on every day across the 10 day program, there are a multitude of events uh, and I'd encourage you to visit the website and have a look at those. One of the other highlights will be a visit to the other World Heritage Area in the vicinity, the Greater Blue Mountains, um, a million hectares of um, upland eucalypt um, forest that is on the, on the edge of Sydney. This visit will take place over two alternative days, uh, multiple buses on each days, multiple languages, different grades of activity to suit different tastes, um, but everyone will get a morning activity, an afternoon activity, and an interesting lunchtime stop. Um, and they will be a mix of natural and cultural heritage experiences. And this is possible because of the support we're getting from the Blue Mountains National Park, um, from the National Trust, from the Blue Mountains uh, City Council, and from our traditional owner hosts, the Gundungara Aboriginal community. And then I, I mentioned that there will be a series of associated tours. These take place before and after uh, the core general assembly. And for those who are interested in the Qantas flight deals, the Qantas flight deals and discounts apply to the entirety of your GAE 2023 trip. So any flight from 10 days before to 10 days after, including internal flights within Australia are subject to the Qantas discounts. And you can read faster than I can talk, but. Um, there are a series of special experiences there on the screen. Um, every state and territory of Australia other than Western Australia is represented. And in every case, these will be special experiences that will include the normal, normal visitor highlights, but also opportunities to meet site managers, traditional owners, to be taken to places that the average uh, tourist does not go. So for those of you who are making the journey to Australia, I'd absolutely recommend that you look at these opportunities as well. Uh, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that this event is only possible because of absolutely massive support from government instrumentalities and major organisations, which are on the screen. And I do ask that if you meet any of these people, tell them that you saw the logo on screen. What's on screen at the moment are our partners. So this is government and the corporations that are providing us support in kind. But in addition, um, we have a whole series of corporate patrons. Um, the ones on stream, which I'll mention, Extent, EarthCheck, GML Heritage, The Art of Multimedia, and Lovell Chen are providing really substantial contributions. And to put that in context, our registration fees will cover approximately a quarter of the cost of staging this event. The rest comes from our partners and our corporate patrons. And then um, we have a series of other levels of corporate patron. Uh, most of these companies are providing substantial cash contributions as well as contributing to the program content and supporting in other ways. And again, if you know any of these people, um, please do mention that um, they were acknowledged and that you were proud to see their logo on the screen during the, the briefing today. And so look, I, I come near to the conclusion of my part of the uh, panel presentation with a, a quick summary of the program overview. Um, before and after we have the tours around New South Wales and around Australia. We then have a program of site events, workshops, site visits and meetings between 31 August and 9 September. Um, Michelle will talk shortly about the Youth Forum. Um, we have a welcome to country um, for indigenous delegates happening at a very special location uh, in our Royal Botanic Gardens on the 3rd of September, followed by the Opera House opening ceremony. Then Monday to Friday, 4 to 8 September, is the General Assembly and Scientific Symposium itself, and they uh, take place interactively and concurrently. Um, I highlight that we have two really fabulous keynote speakers, um, June Oscar, who is um, uh, uh, an Indigenous a senior Australian elder who is um, the National Indigenous Rights Human, Commission, uh, Human Rights Commissioner in Australia, and Her Royal Highness Princess Dana Faraz, who is the President of the Petra Trust 
president of the National Trust in Jordan and a co-opted ICOMOS board member. Um, I've mentioned the Heritage Lecture already. Um, the, the parallel programs of the Scientific Symposium will take place. Um, and there are, Steve will talk about this, but there, are, there is just a vast array of fabulous content in the Scientific Symposium. The exhibition I've mentioned, the World Heritage, uh, Blue Mountains World Heritage Area uh, visits on the 6th and 7th September. And then on Friday the 8th, we have our plenary closing and a gala dinner again at the ICC Darling Harbour. And so um, to our friends in New Zealand, I'd, I'd highlight that um, it's been a difficult um, six years. And this is the first in-person ICOMOS training assemb assembly for six years. Um, please encourage delegate registration, do it sooner rather than later, because we have early bird deals, which will finish on the 31st of May. So now is the time to get your institutional approval, um, make your decisions and get online and get registered. Um, I can almost guarantee that this will be the nearest ever uh, ICOMOS General Assembly for Kiwis. As the person who's been the convener um, since around 2017, I can say to my Kiwi colleagues, don't put your hand up to host, it's far too much work. Um, the World Heritage Committee sessions, some people will be aware of. Um, for various reasons, the committee has decided to commence its um, World Heritage Committee um, session immediately following our event, but for those of us like me who have to try to be at both, uh, I highlight that it's actually possible to do both. Um, that I'd highlight that the pre and post tours, um, for those of you who are generally interested in visiting Australia, will offer special opportunities that you will not get at another time. And I conclude by again mentioning the Qantas deals and encouraging you to purchase the carbon offsets um, at a modest cost, which allow us to leverage a contribution from Qantas. So at that point, I say thank you. And I look forward to um, the presentations from my colleagues, the, the other panel members. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now to delve a bit deeper into the Scientific Symposium program, we have Dr. Steve Brown here with us. So thank you, Steve. And in a moment, I'll pull up your slides and we can get started. Thank you, Stacey. Um, while we're getting started, I just want to acknowledge that I'm on Ngunnawal country, which is in the ACT region of Australia. I'm in a slightly noisy section of Ngunnawal country. I'm in a town called Bungandor and I'm in an outdoor cafe. Um, so the GA Scientific Symposium, um, just some uh, additional information um, beyond what Richard has provided. Um, so Ona Vilaikas, is the uh, GA 2023 Scientific Symposium International Co-Chair, and I am the Australian Co-Chair. Next slide, thanks. Um, the GA 2023, by the rules of uh, ICOMOS, um, has a scientific symposium, uh, which there is the scientific uh, committee um, for GA 2023 comprises 15 members as are listed there. I won't spend too much time on these slides because uh, this is being recorded and people can look. The so next slide, thanks Stacey. And this is what we all look like on the scientific uh, committee. Um, so quite a global spread of people. Um, I'm glad to say a good spread of gender with the dominance of women, I'm pleased to say, which I think represents um, the membership of ICOMOS. Um, so a, a, a great team of people um, uh, that are supporting the scientific uh, symposium. Next slide, thanks. Um, so the overall, the overarching theme for GA 2023 is heritage changes. Um, and it's a it's a topic that was chosen to to look at the uh, to examine the sort of the, the dramatic and tumultuous changes taking place in the 2020s. Um, we don't have to mention don't well I'm sure we're all aware of the climate emergencies that have been happening, COVID-19, the lockdowns, the closed borders, the increase in virtual meetings such as this one the Black Lives Matter movement and many other movements that have taken place in this last three to four years and which have, have profoundly altered the ways in which the world has experienced. 
And so heritage changes has a double meaning. It's both asked what is changing in the field of heritage and what needs to change and what does heritage change? For example, in civil society, the environment, the economy and in politics, what do we do as heritage practitioners or communities interested in heritage to change the world to make it a better place through our work in heritage? Next slide, thanks. Um, so the scientific symposium is, is focused on five days, but really extends for a couple of other days. I just want to highlight the, on Friday, the 1st of September, the Murajuka Cultural Landscape Symposium, um, which is an all day symposium. It will include a number of uh, Maori speakers from Aotearoa, sorry, I said that wrong, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, including Diane Menzies. Um, on the Sunday, the third, there'll be an urban heritage seminar taking place. And as Richard has summarized, the opening plenary sessions take place on Monday, the 4th of September with our keynote speakers, June Oscar A.O. and Her Royal Highness, Princess Dana Faraz. The conference kind of format form of the symposium occurs over the three days, the, Wednesday, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I'll briefly touch on the four themes and five programs involved there. Essentially, there are 88 sessions in the draft um, uh, scientific symposium schedule, which you can see on the website. Um, and we anticipate that when we produce the final um, version of the schedule, which will be after the 31st of May, when the early bird registrations closed and when the authors of accepted papers um, have to have registered, we will still have about uh, 350 um, papers and sessions that will be in those 88 or more sessions. Richard's mentioned the Greater Blue Mountains field trip. We can choose to do an either the Wednesday the 6th or Thursday the 7th of September. And we have the closing plenary sessions on the afternoon of, fr of Friday. Uh, the 8th of September, including a panel on uh, heritage changes, the future of the World Heritage Convention. Uh, we, are, we are still looking at a number of panel members, but I can share with you that we they include uh, Professor Lynn Meskell, um, who has been an ethnographer of, of the World Heritage Committee for at least a decade, and we'll talk about some of her current work um, reviewing what's going on in World Heritage. We have Tim Tim Badman from IUCN, the International Union for Nature Conservation, um, who uh, has led uh, the work of IUCN in World Heritage for many years. Um, and we will have Teresa Patricio, uh, the president of International ICOMOS. We will also have a number of other um, speakers, high level speakers from the advisory bodies to the World Heritage Convention who are yet to be confirmed. Next slide, thanks. Um, and this is really just a, a quick visual uh, of the five key days of the scientific symposium, just showing um, how, how it will generally work. Uh, where you've got parallel sessions, they tend to be eight, seven or eight parallel sessions per day. So there's a lot of choices to be made about what you, what you might choose to attend. Next slide, thanks. Um, and these are the themes. There are four themes, resilience, responsibility, rights and relationships. And there are a series of programs, Indigenous Heritage, Culture Nature Journey, Heritage for Climate, Heritage as Sustainability, and Digital Heritage. Most of those, except Digital Heritage, represent some of the work of different working groups within international ICOMOS. So they are uh, feed into the kind of work that those working groups are doing. Next slide, thanks, Stacey. Um, so I did want to just acknowledge and recognise the, the different co-chairs for each of these four themes and five programs. So for each one, there is an Australian co-chair and an international co-chair. And as I said before, uh, Diane Menzies is involved and she is the international co-chair for Indigenous Heritage and has made a huge and substantial contribution both to what was happening in GA 2020 and to GA 2023. And I want to pay a special acknowledgement to her generous volunteer time and the amount of work she's contributed to this work. Uh, next slide, thanks. 
Uh, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, either during this webinar or afterward, please do contact Ina Velika or myself, and we will be very pleased to discuss any questions that you might have. Thank you, Stacey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Steve, for taking the time to share some more detail on the scientific program with us. So up next, we look forward to hearing from Peter Phillips, the immediate past Secretary General of ICMOS International and a long-standing uh, ICMOS International board member to share a few words around the statutory meeting program. So if you just bear with me for a second, I'll, I'll grab your slides, Peter, and pull them up on screen. Thanks, everybody. Could I say Bajari Gamarua, which is g'day in Gadigal. I'm on Gadigal country in uh, New South Wales, and I join Richard and Steve in paying my respects to um, all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and uh, Indigenous people um, throughout who are in attendance and who, all who are involved in the General Assembly. Um, that's just the title slide, Stacey, if you could go to the next one. I thought what I would start with was a map of what of, of ICOMOS. On the left, you see the ICOMOS headquarters in Paris, um, and on the right is a, um, a loosely titled an organogram of how ICOMOS works. Um, I won't spend a lot of time explaining this, but I did want you to see just how everything knits together. So, all, all of our 1,000 plus, it's getting on for 11, uh, 10,000, I mean, getting on for 11,000 now, members. Um, they are roughly, um, they can be one of, wear one of two hats. They can be a member of a national committee, um, as uh, most of uh, us are, or they, if there is no national committee in their country, uh, they can be international members. Um, so that's that's one set of groupings of how ICOMOS gets together, and that's the grouping that actually establishes um, the voting patterns at General Assembly, which I'll get onto in a minute. The other way, that uh, the other hat, if you like, that ICOMOS members can wear is that they can join international scientific committees for specialised uh, research, or they can join the international working groups, which are cross-disciplinary uh, groups, um, which um, feed into um, ICOMOS culture in a more general way, if I can, if I can say, uh, use that that term. Now, the national committees um, get together in a national committees forum once a year. Um, the scientific committees get together once a year um, in the scientific council, and in each case. Each committee is represented by its president or by a nominee of that president. When those two come together, the national committees and the scientific committees, they form a thing called the advisory committee. And the advisory committee is there to advise both the board and the General Assembly uh, of ICOMOS. The General Assembly, though, is the sovereign body of ICOMOS. It meets uh, in, in a, a grand way, let me say, every three years. Um, it also meets annually for a very short meeting just to um, uh, deal, deal with, with some uh, legislative requirements uh, that arise from our, um, um, our registration as an association under French law. So, for example, we have to have an annual approval of the budget. Um, every year. So that's what the annual General Assembly does. But the big one happens every three years. And that's what all the fuss is about here. Um, so the, the General Assembly, in theory, is all the members of ICOMOS in practical terms, um, although in, every member of ICOMOS can attend the General Assembly. Uh, in, in order to vote at the General Assembly, you have to be nominated as a voting member by your national committee. Um, and the number of voting members per national committee uh, varies from five to 20, depending on how many members that national committee has. Um, the idea of this, um, we, we considered the United Nations model, which is one country, one vote, um, uh, and at the other end of the spectrum is one ECOMOS member, one vote. Um, one way you get a number of small committees um, who don't actually contribute much in the way of activity or, 
or uh, or, or uh, membership fees to the organisation with uh, quite a lot of power. On the other side, if it's one member, one vote, you get a half a dozen of the larger committees running the show and the smaller committees don't get a look in. So what we're trying to do there is, is strike a balance. Um, the national committees are broadly divided in, into five regional groups. We don't have, uh, ICOMOS doesn't actually have a, um, a formal regional network, but um, the five regional groups um, meet from time to time. I know that uh, ICOMOS New Zealand and ICOMOS Australia um, are very active members of the Asia-Pacific regional group. Um, so every three years, the General Assembly elects a board, um, which has 20 members, um, a president, five vice presidents, a secretary general, a treasurer, and 12 elected members. Uh, every three years, the, the uh, advisory committee elects a president, and that president becomes an ex officio board member. Um, those named members that I said form the Bureau, and they, um, they meet separately. Um, they have uh, specific roles such as approving applications for international memberships and so on. Underneath all of that is the uh, Secretariat, which you can read about a bit later. Um, so that's the background for how ICOMOS works. I'm happy to answer more questions on that. But that this is, this is uh, if you like, why we have all these statutory meetings at a General Assembly. So if we could have the next slide, Stacey, please. So these are the statutory meetings that we have to deal with as part of the General Assembly. The ICOMOS Bureau and the ICOMOS Board meet for their last meeting of the current group um, because there will be an election for the Bureau and Board as part of the General Assembly. The five regional groups that I mentioned um, will actually have uh, been meeting online prior to the GA because... Um, any resolutions or recommendations that come forward from those regional groups need a little time to be to be sifted and um, uh, sort of combined and analysed by by the broader um, advisory committee. So the idea is that although we've got regional group meetings um, uh, scheduled as part of the GA, um, the main body of any recommendations that might come forward will hopefully happen beforehand. But the main purpose of the in-person meetings is so that people can actually say good day to people that they may only have seen online for the last six years or three years. Um, it, it's real, this I can't emphasise enough that the in-person General Assembly meetings are the absolute best opportunity for networking with your colleagues. Um, and so much of the work happens outside these formal meetings, uh, over lunch, over, over coffee, um, over dinner, um, uh, drinks afterwards, things. Just the real business of ICOMOS, I reckon, happens actually outside these statutory meetings. So the International Scientific Committee meetings Richard mentioned um, already. Um, the Scientific Council then um, meets following the regional groups. So that's all of the presidents of the scientific committees. Um, and uh, they do things like looking at doctrinal texts um, uh, and looking at the triennial scientific plan. The National Committees Forum, which is the presidents of all the national committees, tends to meet at the same time as the scientific council. Um, and then the two come together in the, as the advisory committee, and that formalises recommendations to both the board and the General Assembly. Now, because the board comes to a close at each General Assembly, any recommendations that come out of the advisory committee will then go to the new board. And then finally, we have the statutory meetings of the General Assembly itself. Um, we have a, uh, uh, an opening, uh, formal welcomes, uh, speeches by dignitaries, reports by the President and the Secretary General and the Treasurer, um, all the kinds of things that would go on at one of your annual meetings. In addition to that, the General Assembly um, also needs to consider a number of resolutions that are put forward by members or by committees of ICOMOS. These uh, you will have seen, I think, in, in the uh, uh, the ICOMOS e-news, a call for resolutions. Those um, uh, need to be in, I think it is, by May or June. Um, 
and a resolutions committee of the General Assembly will uh, will consider those, and then the General Assembly will be asked to vote on them. And in addition, of course, the General Assembly will be asked to elect the new board and bureau. Um, if I could, so the General Assembly statutory meetings happen in two basic sessions. One is on the first formal day of the meeting, which is on the 4th of September, and the last one is on the uh, the final day, um, which is the uh, 8th or 9th, I can't remember, um, on the Friday, and both of those are formal plenary sessions of the full General Assembly. Now, there used to be, in addition to those, a full afternoon given over to voting for the Board and Bureau. But fortunately, we've been able to um, move all of that uh, voting online. And so that brings me to the next slide. All of the voting at this General Assembly will be online using the Eurovote platform, which has been used successfully since 2020. Um, there will be an online technical opening of the General Assembly on the 25th of August. Um, one of the reasons for that is so that the voting can occur within the compass of the General Assembly meeting, which is what the statutes say needs to happen. Um, the other reason is to make sure that we have a quorum and so that all of the decisions of the General Assembly will be valid. Um, sometimes it hasn't often happened, but occasionally um, it so happens that uh, the General Assembly, for one reason or another, doesn't have a quorum. This, this um, has happened once at an annual General Assembly when we were unable, actually, to um, formally pass the annual accounts, and we had to defer that to the following year. So... Um, the technical opening ensures that we will have a quorum by the time that the, the real General Assembly opens on the 3rd of, of September. So there are a number of rounds of voting um, for uh, the various things that the General Assembly decides. The first one is the board elections. So the, the, there will be several candidates for membership of the board and 20 of those will be elected in the first round. Um, in the second round, from those 20, there will be elections for the President, the Secretary General and the Treasurer. Um, so, and these rounds will, will occur all online, they'll all be advertised. Uh, and all of this occurs before the actual General Assembly um, opens on, on the, uh, in person on the third. The third round voting is for the General Assembly resolutions and the elections of five Vice Presidents. There will be, um, uh, discussion sessions on the resolutions, uh, which will be online prior to the General Assembly. And there will also be, as part of the first morning session or of the GA, um, a session devoted to any uh, in-person discussions on the forthcoming General Assembly resolutions. Um, there is provision for a fourth round of voting if it's needed. Um, for example, last time, uh, there were only four candidates for the five vice president positions, and so we had to have a, full, a fourth round of voting when we, we got further nominations. And the results of all of those votes, that is to say who the board is, who all the uh, bureau members are, and what's happened with all those resolutions, they will be announced on the last day of the General Assembly. The final thing, which I haven't put in the slide that the General Assembly does, is to um, approve honorary membership of ICOMOS International, and there have been calls for uh, nominations for that, and also the uh, most prestigious ICOMOS award, which is the Pierre Algazzola Prize, and that will also be awarded uh, and announced on the last day of the General Assembly. I think that's probably all I need to say at this stage. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Peter. So I'll stop sharing at this point. Um, and so just note um, that we'll now move through um, very quickly um, to an especially, I think, exciting and valuable segment of the GA program and one that is very close to my heart personally as well, being um, the various events aimed at emerging professionals. So thank you so much, Michelle. And I'll just pull up your slides. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I'll try and be quick because I know uh, we're 
quickly running through the session and um, we'll leave some time free for uh, questions. Uh, before I start, I just want to acknowledge that I'm coming today from Wurundjeri country and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to any Indigenous people joining us today. Uh, I'll just wait for you to bring the slides up or I can share as well if that's easier. Just a moment, Michelle. <laughs> no, that's there. okay. A few different slides slide decks to run through okay let me just give this a go hopefully oops everyone should be able to see your first slide in a moment yeah so we can just script straight to the next one um great so yeah as um per Stacey's introduction um my name is Michelle Basher and I'm convening the youth forum uh of the GA 2023 so the youth forum uh is a two three two three day event two night event um that's going to be held at Cockatoo Island um, on Sydney Harbour. It's part of the Australian Convict Sites World Heritage Property. It's effectively a forerunner event to the main scientific symposium program. So it runs from the Friday afternoon through to the Sunday uh, lunchtime, roughly. So delegates will be able to come, go to the island, spend the weekend um, undertaking the quite exciting program that we're building, and then uh, get back to Sydney for the opening ceremony at the Opera House. Uh, we've been running a competitive selection process for the Youth Forum and our round three applications will be opening very soon, uh, next week, in fact, week after next, the 24th of April. So all the information regarding the application process is on the website, uh, but effectively it's a submission of a CV and responses to uh, why the delegates want to attend the youth forum. We have um, a limited capacity on Cockatoo Island. So the competitive process is really to establish that um, we have the right mix of delegates. And so far we have a really exciting mix of delegates coming from um, across Australia and the world um, and joining us on Cockatoo Island for the weekend. Uh, next slide, please, Stacey. So the way the youth forum is set up is that we have three uh, streams. So effectively the, the delegates will uh, self-select into the three streams that we've set up and descriptions of the themes are, and streams as, are on the website. Each of them, while they've got their own names associated with the youth forum, they have linkages back into the scientific symposium themes and programs um, that Steve shared earlier. Uh, the format for the youth forum is really for a range of sessions that are being developed currently by a range of um, the emerging professionals who I'm working with on the Youth Forum subcommittee in partnership with collaborators drawn from the wider profession, including our um, Warama patrons, um, which are the University of Sydney, Deakin University and University of Canberra. So, and the, the outcome of the, the weekend will be effectively uh, a master planning program project with the Harbour Trust, who are the managers of Cockatoo Island as the World Heritage Site on which we're staying. We'll be out on Cockatoo Island for the Friday and the Saturday night uh, in the glamping tents, so right on the harbour. We wake up to views of the harbour out on the island. So uh, I definitely encourage uh, applications from young and emerging professionals from New Zealand. We'd love to see as many um, smiling faces from across the ditch as we can get. Um, and the next slide is just a very high level overview of the program. It's very hard to read on this slide, I'm apologies. Um, but yeah, as it starts on the Friday and heads over to the Sunday and we'd have more de details about what the sessions look like. Um, they're currently in development at the moment. So that's the youth forum. So as I said, very quick, and I'll pass back over to you, Stacey, to curate any questions that you have from the audience. All right. Well, many thanks to all of our speakers once again for taking the time to share a bird's eye view, essentially, um, of this, um, well, carefully designed program. So as we move through very quickly, um, to the second half um, of our chat. Um, I'd like to really open the floor to our audience. Um, please do feel free to share any questions that you might have in regard to the General Assembly, the Scientific Symposium, or simply in relation to the wider ECMOS network. As, as we've heard, the, the GA is essentially um, uh, seen as a truly invaluable um, uh, networking opportunity for 
early emerging professionals, as well as our many expert members. So the floor is open. Um, please feel free to raise your hand, um, speak up, um, and share your thoughts. Eva. Uh, Kira, oh, thank you so much, Richard, Steve, Peter, and Michelle. That was excellent. And um, sort of as a <clears throat> member for ECOMOS for a few years, but a new board member, it was really insightful. And it helped me just put a face and more context to the program. So that was excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I do have a specific question. I've actually got three questions, but I'll start with the most important one. Um, as you might be aware, we've got um, some General Assembly scholarships that ECOMOS New Zealand is running and applications for that close on Monday. Um, so we'll know on Monday how many um, potential scholars we're going to have. We have five scholarships in total, so there will be um, five scholars hopefully coming from New Zealand. Um, but for those scholars, um, I don't, potential scholars, I'm not sure who of those will be online, but as this is recorded, we might send this to them. Um, what would you recommend would be the focus if they have limited time for attendance for what days and parts of the General Assembly and program would you recommend should be the focus for especially um, emerging um, professionals and also with a strong focus on Indigenous, so we are likely to have quite a number of Māori applicants. So over to you. Um, I'm, I might go first and then throw to Michelle. I, I think, um, f firstly, can I say um, a, a huge thank you to ICOMOS New Zealand and to Dulux for facilitating this opportunity, which is fabulous. Um, secondly, that um, to confirm just for everyone who's tuned in, that um, if these um, successful applicants are students, they obviously can register at the student rate. If they are not um, students and not ECOMOS members, we will nevertheless let these scholarship winners register at the discounted ECOMOS um, full member rate. I would suggest that the, 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 the optimal um, core would be to be in Sydney for Friday, the 1st of September, which will be a full day seminar about the Murujuga Aboriginal cultural landscape. This is an extraordinary landscape in Northwestern Australia. It is Australia's most recent nomination to the World Heritage List as an associative cultural landscape and one of the world's great rock art galleries. And people from Murujuga from around Australia and around the world will come to that event. Um, the details of that event are on the, um, on the website under the side events tab. That would then enable those delegates to segue um, into the youth forum and from the youth forum into the five days of the general assembly and the other thing i would encourage is that across the five days of the general assembly there are also a series of early morning activities it's a really lovely idea to be just completely exhausted and shattered by the end of the week having got up early to do things like early inspections of hyde park barracks or um, boat trips on sydney harbour and and, and things like that um, because we do have evening programs. Every evening there is something to do. And again, I'd absolutely encourage that, all of that. But over to Michelle, who can do a youth forum. Yeah, so I think for emerging professionals, the youth forum is a, a key event to attend. Uh, it's effectively a, a, a small cohort of the people that we're going to the General Assembly, but will give delegates heading into the, the bigger event kind of that grounding and meeting people and having that ability to to um, really connect and uh, build those networks um, in advance of the, the main GA. I also note that uh, during the GA Scientific Symposium program, during that week, there are a couple of emerging professionals events as well. So the Monday night, there's networking uh, drinks for emerging professionals. So um, for people who weren't able to make it to the youth forum, but still want to engage with uh, other emerging professionals that will be happening on the Monday night. And on the Tuesday night, we have our youth forum rostrum, which is effectively the reporting back of the youth forum to the scientific symposium. Uh, so that's on the Tuesday night as well. So uh, any emerging or young professionals coming out of New Zealand, I'd be saying that they should definitely be thinking about the youth forum as a key part and then staying through for the the full program. 
Excellent, thank you. Um, and just very briefly, and I haven't looked into much detail about the youth form, are there, is, are there extra costs or is there extra registration associated with that? Yeah, there is. It's a discounted fee for those who are also staying for the full GA. Uh, it's $400 for, and that, that includes accommodation, I should say. So the, the cost for registration for the youth forum includes the Friday and Saturday night accommodation out on Cockatoo Island. Um, if you're staying for the GA and it's $500 if you're not registering for the GA itself. Excellent, great. And just a side question before, oh, then I'll leave it to others, is um, in terms of some of these other amazing events that you were talking about, are they included within the registration fee? So just for the general program, some of these tours, or are there additional costs as well? But by and large, there is a there is a fee for each of the side events. Some, some are um, uh, no charge. Those fees are clearly stated. If you go into the GA 2023 website, click on program and click on side events, they are arranged by the different days and they have different arrangements. Um, some of them include buses and lunch and they have quite significant costs. Um, others like walking tours are complimentary. Excellent, brilliant, thank you. Um, over to others. I might just answer Ian, hello Ian, by the way. Ian Bowman has put a comment in the chat. Um, the each individual um, international scientific committee is um, making its own arrangements about meetings or events, but with our support. The default position is where they're just having an annual meeting that will be on the evening of Saturday, September 2, and we will provide venue and other support for that. But a number of the committees are instead hosting uh, more major events. So the Wood Committee, for example, has a two day um, symposium and it's on, it's in the side events tab the 20th century heritage committee has got a a half day symposium at the opera house the international the intangible cultural heritage committee is having a a half day colloquium i think that's on the uh, saturday the second as well so there is a little bit of um difference between the different uh, committees. I think the Polar Heritage Committee is having their meeting in a freezer at uh, International Conservation Services. So there you go. Thanks, Richard. Very kind. Sounds like lots of fun. I can say that um, uh, I think Diane, um, please feel free to speak up and share your question. Okay, thank you very much. Just a very short question to Michelle because I'm sure it will be asked. Uh, over here, and that is, what is the cutoff age for um, the youth forum? I wish I could uh, fit in there, but I don't think <laughs> that would be possible. Don't we uh, all? <laughs> yeah, look, Diane, we we are, we, are, we aren't strict on it. It's really, um, a, it is it's for young and emerging professionals. So if people have, are relatively new in their career um, and they're kind of self-identify as young, we're not um, being strict on the you must be or, you know under thirty five is probably the you know, rough cut up. But if there are particular um, people who fit well into the category of the people we're seeking for the youth forum and, and feel that they're emerging in the industry, then we're um, happy to consider applications. Uh, and I know as well, because we did go through a round of applications for 2020 um, before the change, uh, there were people who were kind of young and emerging then who are still coming to 2023 because they missed the opportunity to come in 2020. So uh, for anybody who feels like they might qualify for the youth forum, we're more than happy to consider their application is probably how I would say it. Yeah, can, can I can I echo what Michelle said and just clarify because I do get a little bit of international email traffic about this. ICOMOS globally has an emerging professional group which is inclusive and is about people moving into the field. It's not age-based. Um, in offering this event, we've picked up a process that's also happened for World Heritage Committee sessions, and it is more directed at younger people um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that the majority of emerging professionals are in that demographic. And so we've got an event that has outdoor camping and will have activities and program that are directed to a younger demographic. And also just being very blunt about things, um, we could get money to fund for young people, not oldies. So it's a youth forum, not an emerging professionals forum. With apologies to all the oldies that are online, in, uh, in which I include myself. 
Thank you so much. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the time at the moment, um, but really um, the, the floor is open. Um, if there are any last few burning questions um, to our speakers, it's a really invaluable opportunity to have all four of you here with us. Um, so we thank you once more for that. Um, I can't see any hands going up. Um, so perhaps now might be a good time to um, close off. Our, our chat for now. Um, of course, we can imagine that there'll be many discussions in the lead up to the MGA and at the GA itself. So it's um, really fantastic to um, uh, look forward to the future. So um, really at that, and a special thank you um, once again to our speakers um, for your time here, to our audience um, and those who might be watching um, this clip um, later on, please do feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, uh, uh, and you can reach us via Facebook or our website. Um, and lastly, I'd just like to say that um, to anyone who might be new um, to the ECMOS network, who's perhaps um, watched or will watch this discussion and might be thinking, hey, I'd like to be a part of that, we would love to hear from you. There are many, many um, uh, different opportunities to be involved depending on your interests. So please do come forward and reach out. But at that, thank you very much, everyone. Um, and we look forward to meeting in person in a few months' time. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, thanks, everybody. Sashi.